A young mother would vanish off the face of the earth, but then she would be found with alligators. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Laura Ackerson. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Before we get started, of course, if you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Mike. I tell true crime stories here on YouTube. So please subscribe if you're into that kind of thing. I also tell short form true crime stories over on TikTok. So feel free to follow and subscribe. I also sell merch. We ship all over the entire world. And if there's a case you want me to cover, just email me. My email is listed below in the description of the video. So just email me the name of the person, where it happened, when it happened, and I will add it to my list and I will pick it out eventually. I pick my cases at random. So I can't tell you when I'll do it, but I will get to it eventually. But on to today's case. At the time of this case, Laura is 27 years old and she is the proud mother to two young children. Her two boys were two years old and three years old at the time this story occurs. She was an absolutely amazing and loving mom. Her apartment was just full of kids' toys um, because she wanted to make sure that her kids were always happy and entertained. Her kids were her entire life. The father to the two boys was a man named Grant Hayes. Grant was a aspiring or wannabe musician, which caused him to kind of bounce around a lot and eventually would end the relationship between he and Laura. And ultimately he would end up meeting another woman. Her name is Amanda Smith. I guess she was an aspiring actress and the two of them would eventually get married and they would also have a child together. On the surface, it appeared that Laura, Grant, and Amanda were in this kind of agreement that, you know, they would have split custody with the kids, and it seemed to be a pretty settled arrangement. Laura was trying to start her own business, uh, and this business would have been in the restaurant industry, and she was working with a really good friend of her, hers, Siobhan, and Laura really wanted this business to take off because, again, she was thinking about her two sons that she really wanted to make sure they had a really good life and that they were always being taken care of. And so she was really hopeful for the future with this, you know, new business idea. It was July 13th, 2011. Laura had an appointment, I guess, that day with a, a restaurant, a local restaurant in the area, which, by the way, this is in Kinston, North Carolina. Now, Siobhan was supposed to also be in contact with Laura throughout that day, but Laura would not get back to her at all the rest of the day. Over the next couple of days, Siobhan tries calling her, texting her, going to the apartment, knocking on the door, and she gets nothing. She gets no response. And so by July 18th, 2011, Siobhan reports Laura missing. Police are able to gain entry to Laura's apartment. Everything inside seems nice and orderly. There doesn't appear to be any signs of a struggle. There also isn't really much missing, like she hadn't like packed and just left, like all of her belongings were still there. Police were able to find CCTV footage from her apartment building. And on that July 13th day, around 8 a.m., they captured Laura leaving her apartment through, I guess, like a side door. And that was the last time she was spotted, you know, in the apartment. The police also learned that there was, um, during this custody agreement between Grant and Laura, they would meet every Friday at, I guess, a gas station at 5 p.m. And according to Grant, he showed up with the two boys, you know, to give them to Laura that Friday evening, but uh, she did not show up. Police found CCTV footage. They confirmed Grant showed up with the two boys. He appeared to be kind of just standing around and waiting for someone. It looked like he was. And then after some time, you see him on the phone, presumably maybe trying to call Laura, but then he just leaves after some time. Once the news of Laura's disappearance broke news, another one of her friends named Oksana would go to police because at, on July 13th at 4.19 p.m., Laura, I guess, left a voicemail with Oksana that she was actually going to go to Grant's apartment that evening to see her two boys. And then they, uh, Laura and Oksana, were supposed to hang out at 7 p.m. that day, but then Laura didn't show up. So now police have this window of time between 4.19 p.m. when they have a confirmed voicemail that they can hear of her voice, and then 7 p.m., that's the time frame she vanished. And then about just a very short distance from Grant and Amanda's apartment, they find Laura's car. 
just parked there in the parking lot. They check inside the car. Again, no signs of a struggle. Nothing appeared to be missing. It was just her car and nothing else was out of the ordinary. But again, Laura is nowhere to be found. Grant told police that this custody arrangement was super amicable. It was, it was really, it was a good standing thing. But friends of Laura would say the complete opposite, that Grant was very contentious because of Grant and Amanda. That Amanda always disrespected Laura's parenting. You know, it just always happened. So police contact Grant and say, hey, would you be willing to come down to the police station? He says, no, I'm actually, we're I'm out of town. And so the police were able to get a search warrant to search his apartment that he shared with Amanda. When they get there, they notice there is a blotch of carpet, this big carpet stain that clearly was bleached. I mean, it was, it just stood out like a sore thumb. They also had this strong odor of bleach coming from the bathroom. They also were missing a shower curtain. And this was not a shower that had doors. It needed a curtain and it was gone. It was missing. They also described the bathtub as being so clean that it looked like it was brand new, just installed, nice and shiny. They found a handwritten note in the apartment. This was a note with regards to some custody arrangement that Laura would give up custody of the boys for $25,000. Laura apparently had her signature on this and it was dated July 13th, the last time anyone saw her. While searching the apartment, they found a receipt for a reciprocating saw, which never bodes well in stories like this, and the receipt tracked it to a Walmart. Police go to that Walmart, they look up surveillance footage from the timestamp on the receipt, and lo and behold, they see Grant at about 2.30 in the morning. The literally, so July 13th, and then rolls into July 14th. So now we're in the morning of July 14th, where he is seen purchasing the reciprocating saws, extra blades, and he also purchased some gloves. They catch him. They see the actual purchase going through with him making the purchase. He then comes back two days later to buy a bunch of ice and I guess a cooler. On July 16th, they learned that Grant had purchased or rented a U-Haul truck. He told the U-Haul people, yeah, I'm going fishing and we're going to be getting a whole bunch of like, like uh, freezers and fridges with, uh, with fish bait in it. And to the U-Haul people, he seemed totally calm, cool, and collected. They found out that he was driving the U-Haul to uh, Fort Bend, Texas. And lo and behold, that's where Amanda's sister lived. So police go down to Fort Bend, Texas, and they talk to Amanda's sister. And she says to them, will you guys pray with me before I tell you what I know? That's always a good start. And she told police that Amanda and Grant hurt, told her that they hurt Laura. And that they had asked the sister if she could, if they could borrow a boat to go out to the lake or the creek to go fishing. And they asked her a very strange question. Do you know if alligators could eat a person? To me, those statements, immediate red flag. I'm probably calling police immediately. So on Sunday, July 24th, 2011, based on this information, police would go out to Oyster Creek and they found human remains. Basically remains that had been either chopped up or bitten apart, uh, but it was not a full body. They found a skull that had been more decomposed than the rest of the body. Dental records would come back and it was confirmed to be the remains of Laura Ackerson. On July 25th, 2001, police and SWAT basically kicked down the doors of where Grant is living or staying with his parents at that exact time, and they arrest Grant and Amanda. And while at their parents' house, they found more evidence that Grant had purchased uh, on July 19th, uh, several gallons of acid from Home Depot. And there was surveillance footage of Amanda, I guess, dumping out the excess acid. So what police came up with was that Laura had gone to the apartment that night to, I guess, visit the boys. And something came up with the custody about this. Hey, you know, if we give you this much money, will you basically give us custody? And she probably said no. They probably forged her signature thinking they could probably pass that off. Something happened, led to a fight, an altercation, and she was killed. And then they decided to dismember her body or hide her body in any way they could. By the way, were the two boys there and witnessed this? I'm not 100% sure. I just, I hope they weren't there to see it. 
On September 16th, 2013, Grant Hayes was found guilty and he was convicted of first degree murder and he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Amanda would basically go to trial and she would say, oh, poor me, I was a victim to Grant. He, I was scared of him. But the CCTV footage they had of her just like dumping out acid, she seemed so casual, so chill. She was alone. She did not appear to be in any kind of duress. And they also had plenty of evidence about how much she really didn't like Laura and how they butted heads. So on February 18th, 2014, Amanda is found guilty of second degree murder and she is only sentenced to 13 years in prison. But in 2018, as she's currently in prison, she is then uh, goes on trial for desecration of a corpse. And she is actually convicted of that. And she's given an additional 20 years. She got more time for basically dismembering the body than she did for her participation in killing her. But when it was all said and done, she's going to be serving over 30 years in prison. And Grant and Amanda, it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. So when they're both in prison, they decided it's time to go our separate ways. Yeah. So they got a divorce. No. Oh. And for what? For what? They wanted, what do they want? They wanted full custody of the kids. And so they just thought the best thing to do was just to kill her. How did, did it, they never, do you never think about the kids? Like, hey, this is the child's mother. You don't think they may want her in their lives? It's so, it's just such a disgusting and selfish, pathetic thing to do. I believe the two sons are with the family still, being raised by them. And thankfully, Laura Ackerson got the justice she rightfully deserved. But that is it for this case. True crime, Aruni Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. Hope you found it interesting. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Give this video a like. Share it with your friends. Whatever you want to do. I don't know. You do you. I do me. You do you. Stop it. You got it. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. I saw Sal. I Sal am named Mike. Not Sal. I Sal. Shall. Shall it. Timothy Chalamet. Oh, shall see you for the next video. Okay, so, oh, fuck. Bye.